welcome back to The Beauty of Becoming. I am your host, Winnie McDermott, and I'm so glad you have joined me for part two of my conversation with Robin Taft. There was so much in our conversation that came forth that I was like, you know what? This needs to be divided into two parts <laughs> because we talked a lot about emotions last week and just how we should view them and feel them and, and what to do so that we're not ruled by our emotions, but that we still take them into consideration and really uh, value them for, for why God gave them to us in the first place. So got to talk about that last week and this week we're really gonna dive into contentment. And I know that's something we've talked about before on a couple episode, episodes of this show, excuse me. And it's something that I'm always going to talk about throughout uh, this podcast because I think it's so important. I don't think it's talked about enough in, in how it's lived out practically and really what it looks like for us as a life of a believer because you'll hear me say in this show, uh, this episode specifically, that I thought contentment meant you can't feel all of the hard feelings and still be content. I thought that you couldn't have faith and still be frustrated or sad or disappointed and angry and all of those things. But really, as I've grown as a believer, as I've just matured as a, a human being, I realized that no, God gave me those emotions. He knows that I'm gonna feel them and experience them. And I can do that all while simultaneously being content in the life that he's given me. So today we're really gonna break it down about what contentment is for us and how we can live it out practically and what that can look like and what it's looked like in our lives. So. I think you're gonna be super encouraged by this episode. And I just love whenever I get to have a conversation with Robin. So <laughs> let's go ahead and dive in to our conversation. You know, we talk about contentment and I feel like sometimes that word's just kind of like thrown around. And cause I know for me, contentment was okay. So I've, I've kind of have a more of a realistic expectation. And then I have hope like that things can be a certain way, or, you know, like I want that mint chocolate chip ice cream, but I'm going to be honest with you. If I go in my fridge or my freezer and it's vanilla, I am going to have a little bit of disappointment, <laughs> but I always thought like when I heard the word contentment and maybe it's going back to that perfectionist quality that I have in me, um, tendency that you tendency. have had in you. Thank you. Yes. yes Watch yes, yes. how you speak about things. <laughs> yes. I have, I can't do that yet. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad y'all, she just corrected me, but I'm going to take it. <laughs> um, yeah. So that tendency that I have had in the past mm -hmm. of trying to be perfectionist, um, you know, when I, when it doesn't go my way and it's like, oh shoot, there's vanilla ice cream. I do have that disappointment because I, I hoped for, I did want that, um, you know, a certain flavor, but to put it kind of in like a more serious context, like for instance, we're talking to some single ladies here that would love to be married and have a desire to have a spouse and, and a family. And I would put myself definitely in that category, but, um, you know, it didn't come at the time that I thought it would come and it hasn't come in the way that I thought it would come and those things. And I struggled, I wrestled with, okay, there's contentment, you know, I need to be content, but then I still have these like unfulfilled dreams or unfulfilled desires. And I would, I would really beat myself up because it's like, well, Whitney, you're either one or the other, like you're either fully content. And she's laughing at me because I'm so black and white y'all. Like it's not even, I'm linear. Well, I'm laughing because let me tell you. So, um, if you don't listen to Jeremy Foster, like, please, um, I don't know he how many cool. things of Jeremy Foster I've sent to you. <laughs> yeah. So like a lot. literally like my second favorite pastor, I told him that once when I met him, it was super awkward, <laughs> but he, did this thing not that long ago, um, where he talked about the idea of paradox. And he said that this is something that Christians have got to have, and we do not understand this well. And it's that it doesn't have to be either, or it needs yeah. to be both. And it's good. So like with that, I think an unexpected thing that can occur when you are like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm content and I'm hopeful is that, we can still be discouraged yeah, in our definitely. contentment. And when you have that idea of like, no, this is contentment. Why am I discouraged here? Why am I discouraged mm -hmm. in this place? Why like I'd reach contentment and I'm okay with it. Right. Like it's okay to still be discouraged that it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. it, it's okay to still grieve that loss of how you thought it was going to play out. You can still know that God has your best at heart, that, um, that your man is out there. He's yeah. coming. Um, 
we pray over that regularly. And I know <laughs> that her right? man's out there. He's going to be heckin' cute. Um, <laughs> he's going to be amazing. Going to love supporting her in yes, her ministry. Lord. She receives it, but he's not here yet. Mm-hmm. And that is sad. And that's okay. You, God is not afraid of your discouragement. He's not surprised. He's not looking down and like, wow, Whitney, I really thought that you had contentment figured out. Like, what is this? He's not doing that at all. He, he already knows. He already knows your heart. He already knows. He just wants you to be vulnerable with him. Mm -hmm. So when Whitney mentioned that earlier, like, I know that that's something that we've talked about in depth is vulnerability. The first person that you need to be vulnerable with is the person that already knows how you feel. That's good. And he holds it so well, Mm -hmm. like he doesn't meet you with discontent. He doesn't meet you with irritability. That's not who God is. He meets that and says, baby girl, I know, Mm -hmm. I know that that's how you feel. And that's okay. That it's okay that you feel that way. I know you don't understand because I haven't given you all the revelation that you need to understand, but please just trust me. Like I've got you. So it's really important. Um, I know it was for you that, Mm -hmm. that, like, it's okay to be discouraged and still be content yeah. in the same, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. Like yeah. you, you can have both of those together. It can be a both and. Yeah. I love that. And something you've said before too, is just how God knows that we're operating on limited knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's literally giving us the knowledge that we have. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out. And so he knows like, yeah, he sees the whole blueprint of everything, but we're only seeing up to today and like the past, you know, from our perspective, have you seen the shack? Yeah. Beautiful Mm -hmm. movie. Uh, have an entire box of tissues, please. but there's this beautiful, I will never forget when I watched that and what God spoke to my heart when I saw it, there's this visual representation where he is with the Holy spirit and like the physical embodiment of the Holy spirit. And he's walking through a garden and he's so angry and he does not understand. And to him, it literally just looks like weeds. It looks, if you've watched the original, like secret garden from the nineties, which is the best one, it looked like how that was before they like fixed it up. It was like all overgrown (laughs) and it looks crazy and chaotic. And then without you even realizing what's happening, because you're so invested in the story, it pans up Mm. And there is this beautiful, yeah. I mean, it, it's perfect. The design yeah. is so perfect and it's just such a good reminder, like a visual. If you have not watched that, honestly, just watch Go. it for that yes. part alone, oh, I love that movie. but the whole thing will speak to you. Yeah, <laughs> um, for sure. But that part alone just shows you, we, it looks crazy to us and mm. we can't, we can't understand. He didn't make us to understand fully. We, we just don't have the capacity. I fully believe most of the time, every once in a while, he'll give me like glimpses of things. And I'm like, Oh, shut it off. Shut it off. Stop. <laughs> just clo- close it. Close right. it. I don't like it. You know? Um, but he really does understand why he does know why mm-hmm. he does see, he does. It's, it's a beautiful plan that he yeah. has. Well, and, and to a significant part of that was in the garden. Cause that man had lost his daughter. Yeah. Like she'd been kidnapped Terrible and killed. Way, yeah. yeah. And, um, they were like, it was, it was be- through that death, like through putting her to rest and like him finding forgiveness. Like, you know, of course it was like symbolic of him, like finding forgiveness and, and healing through it. It was like from that tragic situation, from that anger that he had, from that bitterness, from that disappointment and the loss of like the hopes and the dreams that he had with his child, yeah. that God created that beautiful garden that you saw. And I just like, I ball every time I see oh, yeah. that. <laughs> so like, I mean, I'm going to tell you the spirit will talk to you through that. Entire oh, hundred I love that God will use like anything yeah. for his purposes. And I love that he used Hollywood to yeah. do what they did with that. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you said forgiveness. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to do like a whole episode on forgiveness. Yes. Please. Forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about, oh, oh, we got a teaser <laughs> Come on out there. <laughs> well, yeah. So just all saying all of that, um, it's okay, ladies, if you have some dreams and desires. And like you said earlier, like God gave you those dreams and yeah, desires. He said them there. Yeah, like those good things that you want, like He put it, put them there, like mm-hmm. she said. And so don't ever feel ashamed or embarrassed that like you have those and that you're disappointed that they haven't happened yet. Yeah. 
I remember because I am such a black and white thinker, like when we've talked about this we before, have lots of thinking errors yeah. that we talk about <laughs> I, uh, because I think tend to think like that, uh, it was, it was like, no, I, you know, it has to be one or the other. Like I can't have faith and then just be disappointed and crying that like, Oh God, this hasn't happened yet. But then Holy spirit was like, go look at David in the Psalms. <laughs> Literally the most dramatic man. One second yes. he is fine. And the next second he's like, why do you hate me? God? <laughs> yes. But then what's, and I'm actually reading through the Psalms again right now. And what I love about it is he's, he's super transparent, super vulnerable that like, God, my enemies are coming against me. Like, where are you? Or, you know, people are slandering against me or doing horrible things. And he just has these real, like gut wrenching moments with God where you just hear him crying out. And, and when you know the backstory of it's like Saul's trying to kill him or his own son's Literally rising up against was him. trying to kill that man. Yeah. Or his family's like rejected him and doesn't seem as valuable, but what's what I love about the Psalms is that it always, always ends with, but God, your loving kindness or, you know, but I, you've brought me through this and you'll, you'll bring me out again. Like, of course I'm paraphrasing, but there's always that twist at the end that brings it back to God and focus. And he's, it's almost as if like, okay, I got all that out. Like I vented, those are my emotions, but now like, let me, let me speak some truth to this situation. And so just kind of applying that to the example I brought up about marriage is it's like, I can, I can want to be married because that's something that God, a desire that he's put in me and Mm -hmm. like to have a family and things like that. And maybe I wanted that to happen sooner than it's happened. Um, maybe I wanted that with a certain person or maybe thing, you know, it didn't happen the way that I thought it was going to happen. And it's okay for me to be disappointed in that and to voice that with God. Cause like you said, he already knows yeah. like, <laughs> well, and it's not like, please remember this too. Like, I think we've talked about this a little bit just because it didn't happen in the time that you thought it would. Doesn't mean that like, it's not that God is holding out on you so you can learn lessons. Yeah, It's right. that God is going to use mm-hmm. the time and the waiting to teach you lessons. So he's not like, it's not, oh, I have to get all this stuff figured out yes. for myself before I can have my man. It's no, I, it's not ready for whatever purpose. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what that is. It's not ready. yet. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready. He's not ready. We are not ready. I don't know, but God is going to use that time for to sure. prepare you even more. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not that he's holding it from you until you can get it together. Like somebody needs to hear that. Yeah. Somebody needs to hear that. It's not about you. It's not about what you're doing. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not, he's not punishing you. That's not who he is. He's not a punishing God. Um, it's just a matter of for whatever the reason is, and we may never know the side of heaven, what that is. He's going to use the time for sure to prepare your heart even more for sure. And you said, so like David Mm. crying and being a whiny little baby, I mean, like legitimately, like people were trying to (laughs) slit his throat. Pretty serious (laughs) situation. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) he was known as like the greatest man of faith in the Bible, which is crazy to me. A man after God's own heart. Yes. My Mm. favorite, it's my favorite story in the Bible. And I'm definitely, this is the Robin translation, which, (laughs) but when Elijah is like, screw it, I'm done. I've done everything that you've asked of me and now people are out to kill me and I just want to die. I just want, I just, just take me, just take me. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. Just kill me now. Right. And then he runs off mm-hmm. and then an angel comes to minister to him because God knew exactly what he needed in that yeah. moment. And he's like, my dude, I need you to eat some bread and take a nap. <laughs> so dude. he did. <laughs> yeah. Like my guy, I told you it's a Robin bird. <laughs> so he totally does. He's like, fine. And he eats like I just imagine like this toddler size Elijah, like <laughs> eating his bread, like whatever and laying down and taking a nap. Right. He wakes up and he's still irritated. And he's like, God, just kill me. Like, what is this about? I am done. Like whatever. And the angel's like, okay, my dude eat some more bread and you need to sleep a little bit longer. That's so, the first like story of being hangry. I yeah, think. Like, so <laughs> like eat a Snickers, yeah. you're fine. So just remember that sometimes sleep and like comfort, physical comfort to your body, whether it's water or rest or food, not like emotional overeating. Cause that's a whole other situation. Um, but sometimes 
you just need physical comfort wow. and God knows that. Yeah. So like, if you can't get your mind right and you can't change your perspective and your emotions can't get on board, go to sleep early. It's good. Go to sleep. Take a nap. That's practical, but it is um, so true. Drink some water. Yeah. Take a nap. Go fall asleep in the bathtub. Not in mm. one of the big ones where you could like yeah, really drown. But like small you know, ones my bathtub, you, you know, is like I just fall asleep in there all the time. But um <laughs> take just rest. Mm. Rest. God knows that you need rest. Like he's not expecting you to conquer the world. He doesn't even all he wants you to do is like partner with him to conquer the world and let him do it through you. Yeah, he doesn't good. need I mean, he loves you a lot, but he doesn't need your potential. He doesn't need mm-hmm. your ability. There's nothing about anything that you could give him that he needs other than your yes. You know, That's so good. even in the waiting, um, the yes, Lord, I'm going to wait. I don't like it and I don't understand it. And here, here I am. This is my heart. If I'm going to be honest, like mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable here, but I know that you're going to use it for me and I know that it's going to be good. So yeah. here I am. I'm going to, I'm going to wait. I might pout through it sometimes, <laughs> but I'm going to wait. Right. That's awesome. And it's not like you said before, it's not the either, or like it can yeah. be the both. both and, and, and I, I love that because even if there are, you know, people around you that are getting to fulfill some of the things that you want, but it hasn't mm-hmm. happened for you yet, you can be excited for them yeah. and maybe sad for yourself or disappointed for, for a time. But then, like I said, just, it's important of that, just going back to the truth though, of God, I'm feeling this way. I'm disappointed, but I know that you're faithful yeah. and I know that you're good and that this is a desire you've given me and our dream you've given me and you're going to fulfill it in your time and your way. But just know that right now I'm a little, <laughs> I'm having a bad day. I'm not okay with it. Please <laughs> also remember when you're compares when you're comparing, the reason that the grass is always greener is because the fence keeps getting pushed back. Mm. So, um, you know, you, you're like, if I can just get here and then when you get there, it's still not good enough. So, you know, yes, go from season to season and learn and grow through those things, but be content with where you are because where you are is where God needs you to be right now. Mm. Um, so when you're looking, the only reason that you should compare, is if it's to bring glory to God and to thank him for what he's brought you, even if it's not the same thing. So the hardest thing I know for me to watch, and I'm sure that this has been difficult for you, different reasons. Like I, we've always had a dream of owning a home and Mm -hmm. that's just not come to fruition. Um, and that's really hard because you see all these people buying houses all the time and it's so easy for them. And we're like, what the heck is going on? But I have learned in that in that hard place to genuinely be happy for Mm. the people that God is blessing because their blessing is not for me to understand. Um, so it's really important to be thankful for that. And in your thanks, we've talked about this is give him glory for what he's going to do in your life. God, you're doing that in their life. And I'm so excited for them. Like, thank you for what you're blessing them with. That's something that I still want. And I know you're bringing it for Mm. me. I know that this is coming. I know that I'm going to have that. I know you've spoken promises over my life about that and given me Mm. a passion for that. And I know that those dreams are not lost on you, that you're going to fulfill, like you're a promise keeper. I know that you're going to do those things. And I'm always like, if you can do it for her, you can do it for me. Yes. <laughs> or if you can do it for him, you can do it for me. My best friend did that. She can't remember names, couldn't, couldn't remember names. And, um, God just gave me an incredible, I think it's because I know what it's like to feel forgotten, mm-hmm. um, and not noticed. So he gave me that and I can remember names. So I was volunteering at my church and I could remember like 300 names as they were coming through the door on a Wednesday oh night. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense. People are like, how do you do it? I'm like, Holy spirit. Yeah. Um, but she's like, she prayed because she got a position at the church and she is in charge of an entire dream team now. And it's like 150 people. And she's like, God, if you, if you can give that to Robin, like you, you have the ability to give that to me. I need that. Yeah. I, I want that blessing. And he did. And it's been oh amazing gosh, to watch. That. Yes. So cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, I think man, today's been a boost for me and I know <laughs> it's been great. Yeah. <laughs> it has to have been for you ladies listening. I'm so glad I know that God uh, really directed your path to listen to this episode uh, That when you're listening to it, the time you're listening to it, the day. And I just want to encourage you that, uh, you know, don't give up hope. Don't give up the dreams that God's given you because they're good. Yeah. And he has a plan and a purpose um, and it may not line up with ours, but there's always beauty in that process. I know 
I had mentioned, I, I would have rather been married younger. You know, I would have done it at 18 if I could have, but, um, I've, I'm like, thank God I did it though. Now that I've like looked back and done so much work and healing because it's like, man, God's brought me through so much. He's brought so much healing into my life. Yeah. He's, he's matured me. And I'm just like a very a healthier version <laughs> of myself now that when I go in, when I do have go into that marriage, like I'm going to go in as a, a, a more whole person, yeah. a healthier person set up to succeed. Yeah. And not that, like you said, not that that was ever a prerequisite yeah. for God to bring that into my life. Like nope. there was nothing, I wasn't inherently like wrong, you know, or yeah. bad. Um, but God, for whatever reason has my life set up like this. And so he used that time, yeah. you know, and he, and he's using that time. And I just want to encourage, uh, you ladies, you know, I know I brought up, brought up marriage, but it could also be about a job that you're dreaming for, yeah. uh, or maybe you're wanting to move or whatever it is that, that you want to start a business, like get a degree, whatever it is that you've been wanting, but hasn't happened yet. Like apply everything yeah. <laughs> that we talked about today, because it's going to help you tremendously. Also, sometimes God is just waiting for you to take a step. Mm. Like maybe he's already told you what to do and you're like waiting, but he's like, Nope. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> exactly. I so you're just, like when you first take that step of obedience, just trust that if God doesn't, is he, if he's not ready, he'll shut it down. You yeah, know what I mean? And just sure. say, God, like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply to that degree program. I'm mm-hmm. going to get this home loan. I'm going to, I'm going to prepare in the preparation mm-hmm. for what yeah. you're bringing to me. That's good. So. Yeah using that time as preparation yeah. time. I yeah. love it. Extra prep. Yeah. As we were talking, the, uh, verse in first Corinthians seven seventeen um, came to mind and it's the message version. I know we've talked about it before. Uh, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church and he says, and don't be wishing you were someplace else or with someone else where you are right now is God's place for you. Yeah live and obey and love and believe right there. Yes. God, not your marital status defines your life. So, and That's even I, this, I love that. I go back to this verse a lot, but even if you take out, like I said, the marriage context, yeah. like if that's not for you, if that's not resonating with you, the part where it just says where you are right now is God's place for you live and obey and love and believe right there. Like I, I love that verse because for whatever reason, God has placed us where we're at yeah. right now in this place, in this season. And like I said, as long as we're seeking after God, following after him, we can be assured that he's not going to let us get off track, off base. You know, he's going to, or if we do wander a little bit, he'll get us back on the path. But um, just, just understanding that, okay, for whatever reason, this is God's designed my life to be where it is right now. And so God, what do you want to do here? Like, what do you have for me here? What can I learn? How can I grow? Um, What, what can I learn about myself? And what kind of like you were talking about the preparation, like what can I be doing in this season? Like, yeah, these things haven't happened yet, but I can be preparing for them. Yeah. And so what does that look like? And it's not like dressing for the job that you want. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause nothing's wasted. Like yeah. God's going to use it all. God's going to use even the situations that you think are monotonous or not valuable. And it's all, I think eventually it all makes sense in the end. A lot of it will make sense. Well, because I'm just going to be honest with you. I've learned this from experience and I've heard it in messages before. If you're not willing to do the monotonous and what he's called you to right now, why would he take you to the next level? Wow. You know, and that's not out of like, (laughs) yeah, it's not out of like punishment. It's not, it's just, you have to be, he just wants your yes. Like you have to be willing to be where you are right now, even when it's uncomfortable, because if you don't, if you don't learn those lessons and get strengthened at that level, then that foundation is not as strong as he needs it to be Mm. for you to do what he needs you to do, whether that's in your marriage or your family or your job, it it doesn't matter. That's good. Well, why don't we wrap up today by you praying for um, just anyone who is dealing with, you know, expectations. Like, yeah, I had these expectations. I'm dealing with loss and grief or, um, you know, maybe someone that's just recognizing it and saying, okay, like, what do I do from here? Like, I just want you to pray just for that group of people. Yeah. Um, just so they're encouraged to, to move forward and what God has for them. Absolutely. 
Father God, I am so grateful um, to be able to have these conversations, to be able um, to impart the knowledge that you've given to me, um, to others. God, for anybody that's in a place of disappointment, that's in a place of discouragement, that's in a hard place of waiting, um, the waiting, as you well know, um, Jesus, you walked this earth and you had to wait. Um, you waited 33 years before mm -hmm. your ministry started. Um, you're a perfect example of the waiting and how to do that well in the waiting, you still prepared, you still yeah. did things. You weren't idle and there was nothing that was wasted. Like Whitney said, there's nothing that's lost. God, you use every single aspect of our waiting for our preparation. Yeah. I just pray Lord, um, that you touch every single person's heart, um, that you show them things that you give them visions that you speak to their heart about some of the things that might be coming and um, give them a yes. sign that they're headed in the the right direction, Lord God, um, let them know that you haven't forgotten about them, that this place of disappointment, um, that's not an altar that they need to build, Lord mm, God, they need to good. build an altar to their future, yes. the future that you're calling them to, the things um, that you've given them a passion about and you've given them a heart about, Lord God, I pray your spirit of peace and joy just saturates every single listener. Um, mm. God, you're so good to us. You're so merciful in the way that you work. And sometimes it's really hard for us to see down here. Our disappointment and our emotions can really cloud what's going on. So I pray that you um, rip open the curtains that veil our eyes, that we are able to see through your eyes, that we're able to feel things through your heart, Lord God, and that we're able to walk in that obedience and in that favor of being in your will, even mm -hmm. in the waiting. I praise you and I declare those things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yay. Woo, that was a good prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Spirit prayer. Yeah, I love those. That's kind. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Robin, it's been such a joy to have you on again. I'm sad that I have to leave no, right now. I know. Makes me sad. I like but it. that just means you're going to come back. So <laughs> we have to get you back. We'll on make the schedule. sure that the viewers like it. If yeah, they don't like I, it, don't call I don't care if they maybe. like it or not. I like it, so. <laughs> but I know they're going to like it. So y'all ladies, you know, I love you. And We've I, prayed over this. Like we mm -hmm. were fully aware that we knew that whatever, whatever we like kind of talked about what we were going to talk about, but like very vaguely. Mm -hmm. So we knew whatever was going to happen was just like, Holy spirit, just lead it. Yeah. So whatever happened was exactly what you guys needed. Apparently. Yeah, exactly. What we <laughs> needed too. Yeah. <laughs> didn't even know it. <laughs> Uh, I love I love how the Lord does that. Yeah. Um, you just give him your yes and just lay it before him and he'll make it beautiful. Take a step. <laughs> it's all part of, of the beauty of becoming, Yay! right? We're becoming everything that um, God has designed us to be yeah. and what he intended for us. Thanks for listening to the Beauty of Becoming podcast. If you've enjoyed today's conversation, let me know by leaving a positive rating and a comment of how God used today's episode to speak to you. And don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you listen so you're notified whenever a new episode is posted.